If it is, I'm doing cartwheels. Uh. Okay, well, welcome guys. It's Erdos Cause here once again with Law on the High Side Racing League. And tonight, we are here. Race 35 at Homestead, Miami. Should be a fun one tonight. Once again, I'm Erdos Cause as a... What do you mean? Ex oh, there we go. Luckily, I have an invite, apparently, from five minutes ago. <laughs> so, connecting to network. There we go, as we are loading in 11 cars here tonight. Not the big, biggest field. So, let's just see what happens as uh, we're going to decide the final four here tonight. This is definitely going to be a little interesting. Uh, the final four, of course, to make the championship race and we're going to see who can make it in i think we definitely have high side hobie confirmed as one of your championship participators uh it's just going to find out who are the other three championship people that will be racing here tonight as well so as we are currently loading in here it's going to be a very interesting race. Definitely indeed. As here we go. We are loading in. Let's get it. Hey. Here we go. Huncho on the inside. Trick on the outside. Here we go. Green flag. How many left? 39 laps here in stage number one. Here we go in the turn number one. 43 on the inside, 9 on the outside with the 24 on the inside. Trying to look underneath the 9 here, but it's going to be side by side with the 17 here off of turn number two. Down the back straight we go. 9 is going to go down the inside of the 43 here going in the turns three and four. Who's going to go and lead for lap one of this race? Here we go. Well, the nine clear. Three wide for third. Nine just put the 43 in the wall. And the 43 did not lead lap one. It will be the nine. Here we go. Through turns one and two again. Nine. It's going to clear the 43 there off of turn two. And the nine's going to go up to the front. Well, we're hearing 95 just wrecked somebody. Or he wrecked himself. Oh, well, we're hearing he hit the apron. Uh, he pulled a Caleb, um, basically. So, but right now, it's definitely going to be a very interesting race with 11 cars. As Huncho is going to retake the lead. At least my audio works. Yay! You got the audio. We made sure the audio is working. Oh, Huncho and the nine still side by side for the lead. And the nine's going to tuck back in. 24 is going to go down the inside. They're still going to be sitting here battling for P2 as 43's up front. 24 to P2. Oh, couple cars getting loose right there. See right here, ooh, 24 almost cleared the 43. 43 is going to keep the lead. Let's see here we go. Uh, 43 up front having a already solid start to uh, his race. 41 to 2 are side by side here. Oh, three wide. Here we go. Here we go, turns three and four. Here comes the 41 down the inside. Here we go, side by side between the 41 and 43. And the 43, I think with the momentum off of four, is going to keep the lead. Is uh, so far a very interesting start to the race. Right now it's been very interesting. So let's just see what happens here. As of, you know, this start to the race is looking very interesting. Oh, 43 in the wall. 
Got a little too high into the 24 as everybody's going to keep it straight. And the 9 to the lead. So, well, as the 9's now up front, uh, it looks like everybody's going to be single file here. Maybe going's about to go single file. So, let's just see what happens. So, well, let's see how this race is going to go tonight. Like we said, 11 people here. It might not be the best race in the world, but uh, it might be a race. So, is the 9 sitting up front getting a little loose? Here comes, the, here comes the two. Now on the outside, nine's trying to clear. Oh, but the nine's not going to clear the two here. Here comes the 41. The two's going to clear for the lead. Ding to the front. So right now we're looking at the two, the nine, the 41, the 88, the 24, and the four all in this pack. Slate Savage is here. What's up, Savage? Says nine looking fast tonight. Well, he's usually fast almost every week, so. And here we go. Heading into turns one and two. 41 sitting in second. That's a man like Milk. And then just to my fist. Sitting there in third right now. Trying to hold on to uh, some good stage points right here. Here comes the 24. Well, as uh, right now, field's looking very mid. Uh, so here we go. Still gonna be single file here, entering turns one and two. Hold on, let me. I'm trying to see the chat. So, as, uh, this is a very interesting uh, start to the race here with the 9 holding a solid gap to the 88 here. Um, already doing an awesome job. So here we go, down, uh, down the back straightaway. Oh, two car, 41's around. 24 almost got taken out with them, so but the 20 or, or the 41 around and crashed off of turn number two. It's, it'll still happen in the championship race. Oh, don't worry, it will happen on Thursday. Um. You'll never know that high side was ever a league. <laughs> God. He's gonna he's gonna hide in Cuba. God, he'll fly to Cuba. I live in Cuba for the rest of his life. Trying to stay low. So as the 88 and the 9 are currently uh, got a good gap on third place and fourth place right now. And this is the part where it's going to get very interesting now because everybody is basically spread out. So here we go through turns one and two. Nine up front. We're already coming up on a lap car. The three of Killer here. So here comes 88. It's 88. Might have gotten a little loose there. He might lose the draft here of the nine. Nine out front in the lead. Here at Homestead. So... Um... 
How many to go left in this stage? 24? Okay. Okay, well, uh, let's look at the rest of the field, I guess. Um, there's the 24, there's 17, there's 41 that wrecked it. You see the front end damage on his car. There's the 2, there's the 95, there's 88, there's the 4, there's the 3, there's the 6, there's 43. And back to the leader of the 9, who's running down the lap car of RTSB Killer. Uh, Killer is set to have a good finish tonight, only because there's 11 cars in the field. Uh, so, let's just see how that three car does here on the first stage. Uh, he'll go a lap down here. But uh, the nine is going to play him one lap down as we speak. Uh, we're here in the six hit the wall. As uh, Here we go in the one and two. Definitely going to be a very interesting corner one and two is because you can get really loose off of two. Also, four is going to be an interesting corner because you really get loose off four as well. So, you know, you're going to have a, a lot of loose race cars. You'll have a lot of uh, interesting things happen off the exit of these corners that could uh, play a big uh, factor late in the race. Twenty one to go in stage one. Okay, well how's how's everybody's day going? Hopefully everybody's having a good day in the chat. We're hearing the twenty four is gonna come in and fix damage, so we got some early pit stops here. Some possible people trying to short pit. Four car is pitting this time. That's what we're hearing as well. So oh, the nine's going to pit this time. So here we go. Is uh, It looks like uh, here we go. Pit stops. Nine's mowing the lawn a little bit trying to enter pit road. Like we said, a very interesting way of entering pit road. I'm taking this. This is the first and final stops of the stage. Probably that's what we're hearing. So the leader is in. Okay. Well, let's see who's going to exit pit road here. Is basically almost everyone's in, except for maybe like two or three cars. Here we go. Race off pit road. It's going to be the nine, but the two also got a really good stop as well. So, looks like the two may have closed in the gap a little bit here. As the nine is exiting off of the access road. Oh, the two going to come out in second, just maybe a little bit closer to the nine. And then the 95 is going to exit Perot a lap down. Uh, it's not good for the 95, but uh, he is now placed one lap down here at Homestead. Boom, 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 boom. We're in 18 to go. The nine is the leader. Never wished 18 laps can go faster in my life. Um. Uh, do do do. Let's see. Not battle. Not battle. No battle. Oh, the six and the twenty-four. Here we go. The battle for the. Four, the fourth spot, uh, I think it's the fourth spot. Fourth and fifth is, this is the closest battle on the racetrack. We go down the back straightaway into turns three and four. 
24 is going to dive it down the inside. Side by side, and 24 clears. 24 passes the 6, so that's uh, 24 up the 4th. And uh, we'll see if he can run down the 88. So while we're sitting here right now, um, uh, hopefully everybody's having a great day. Uh, I had a great day today. Um, for some reason, somebody on Instagram is calling me, so I'm going to have to decline. So, uh, yeah, it's been a very interesting uh, race, an interesting day for at least me. Uh, got done with a league race not too long ago, uh, about maybe an hour and a half ago. As, uh, um, I just got done winning uh, Martinsville uh, for Pennzoil, so that was fun. Um, I'm also looking right now that uh, Donovan Mitchell might get traded. Is we're hearing that uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, is going to be uh, traded probably from the Jazz, so the Jazz are rebuilding. Um, no, LA's got. The, I don't think he goes to either LA team because right now there, Donovan Mitchell, the place Donovan Mitchell would go, would. No, no, he he already had a few with Rudy Gobert. I don't think he'll go to or want to get traded to Timberwolves. No lie, I see Donovan Mitchell going to Miami. Donovan Mitchell in Miami gets to start over Victor Oladipo. No, Phoenix has got their sights set on KD. I'm sorry. They got their sights set on KD. There's no way that they don't get KD. I think them and Miami's the favorite to get KD right now Donovan Mitchell goes to Miami that's what I'm calling I think uh, he'll go ahead and start over Oladipo Oladipo would come off the bench um, but you'd have Jimmy Butler Bam Adebayo and then uh, Victor Oladipo I think Kyle Lowry would be in the trade I'm sorry Kyle Lowry has not been good the last couple of years uh yeah, well, he has not been good since the Toronto, since he was in Toronto, so. If he went to Portland, Portland would be at least second to, like, conference final eligible. I don't think they'll be championship. They're still, they're still missing a lot of pieces uh, on the team. I think a lot of teams that need that one piece would just like to go and, uh, you know, trade for him. I mean, I would be happy if seeing him go to Miami, win a title in Miami, because Miami's close to a championship team. I mean, I of course, I thought they were better than Boston, but Boston just played better at the end, and that's why Miami didn't make it. I thought Miami versus Golden State would have been a better finals than whatever Boston-Golden State was. So, Boston got their, uh, I know Boston's got their guy, so Boston doesn't need Donovan Mitchell. You know, so I think it's down to Miami, and I think another team that can go get Donovan Mitchell right now, I think can definitely be the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks are just willing to go in on any big name at this point. So... Well, as they're wrecking here, uh, the two of Ding has passed for the lead. So, Ding up front. He's caught the nine, and he passed the nine. So, as uh, we got eight to go in stage number one. We're hearing he hit the glitch. Well, of course... It, well, it's the seams. The seams here are dangerous. I would say the seams are more dangerous than what Iowa is because 
Oh, here we go. They're side by side for the lead off of turn number four. Two in the nine. Good battle here. Here we go into turns one and two. The nine's going to have a good run on the bottom, and he is going to clear. So the nine back to the lead. So, as the nine's going back to the lead, two is uh, going to see what he can do to pass him back. So, uh, while I'm sitting here right now watching uh, this battle go down, two is going to continue to look on the outside. Is uh let's see sports center. Oh, so I might say again for the lead. Oh, can the two clear? Will the nine get the run? And the nine's gonna get the run and clear the two, so how many to go? Five to go, four at the line. Oh, and somebody apparently bought an old generation F1 car. I just saw that. That's interesting. Two's going to dive it down the inside of the nine for the lead again. The question is, why will the nine? Oh, the nine's in the wall. Two's going to go to the lead. So it's the two's going to go to the lead. Four laps remaining here in stage one. Apparently an umpire named Doug Eddings missed 29 calls in an MLB game, which is now the highest of the season by umpire. No, apparently it was a Chicago, it was Chicago versus Toronto game. Well, White Sox versus Blue Jays. Angel Hernandez is awful. Um, he missed the season high 29 calls. Um, he he was 86 percent. He had he was 86.2 percent of his calls were correct, including six blown strikeouts that were technically balls. Or what should have been, should have been counted as a ball. So, so we're going to have one to go at the line. Nine's going to go down the inside of the two here for the stage win. Here we go. Coming to one to go. Will the two cross over? Oh, he gave him a no-no square. Well, I don't think it's going to be enough to get to the inside here. One to go. Stage one. Looks like he's going to try the outside. There we go. He's going to try it. He's going to move into the nine draft here. Down the back straightaway. Nine and two. Let's see, will the two take the inside or will he stick to the outside? He's going to stick to the outside. Can he make it work? To the rear bumper of the nine. Oh, he moves the nine up. Side by side. It's not going to work, actually. Nine got the better run. Nine, stage one winner. Stage one winner, the nine of Trick. He's going to get it done here for stage one. Coming this November. Oh, I'm looking at this. This is going to be hilarious. Is this, is this a jersey reveal? Oh my god. That looks nice. Houston Texans. Houston Texans are coming out with an all red helmet. Hell yeah. Oh. 
So we are hearing the final four is set. Who is the final four? Okay, so we got our final four set. It is High Side Hobie, Huncho, your defending series champion, looking to go back to back. B13, and now Ding has locked himself in. Green flag. 37 laps, stage two. Here we go on the one. Nine to two, side by side here. Go out of turn number two, down the back straightaway. 9, 2, 24, top 3. Down the back here. Nine's going to kind of try and uh, move around, try and break the draft here in the turns 3 and 4. 2 around the outside. 9 on the inside. Nine's going to clear. Who's going to lead lap 1 in stage 2? It'll be the 9 trick. Oh, but the 2's going to look down the inside. Ding down the inside for the lead. Can the two clear? Yes, he can. Two to the lead. Here comes the 24. Uh, looking for second. Oh, it looked like he almost could have gotten inside of the leader right there. Nine's going to give up second. <laughs> Well, let's see, 24 is going to go down the inside here. Two is going to see if he can hang around the outside. Here we go, off of turn number two down the back. Ooh, look like two got a little loose. That might help the 24 here down the turns three and four. 24 trying to make that inside work. And it will, 24 to the lead. Oh, nine to two make a little contact. So is uh, 24 is up front. Right now, uh, everyone's kind of looking to be, oh, 24 gets loose. I didn't want to say I saw that coming, but I also didn't see that coming. Um, oh, well, I've never heard a two for one on a no-no square, but uh, apparently two for one on a no-no square. Oh, nine's going to go down the inside. Two's going to give a nine a bump. Here we go. Out of turn number two. Ooh. Couple of, uh, a little contact going on. Nine's going to go back to the lead. So, so they're going to keep on battling for second and then the battle for fourth behind them. This, uh, looks like the 43 will take fourth. Let's see, we got, got about a six-car pack behind them battling to see who wants to be sixth place. So here we go into turns three and four. 24-2 battling for second. I've never heard that expression before, but okay. Um... That is the first time I've ever heard that expression. Ever? Okay. Well, looks like it's going to get a little calm from here uh, after a little bit of swapping. Uh, that, if that's supposed to be intense, oh, that's intense, oh. Okay, can we stop talking about this, okay? Okay, well, um... So, uh... Nine, remember, they're effective 99.9% .9 of the time, Clorox wipes are. Um... <laughs> Sponsor Clorox, come sponsor us. 
be one of the sponsors of a little on the high side racing league. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of Clorox products here, so it works. I can film a commercial. We all, yeah, we almost got Ray's Energy to win on Sunday. Too bad, didn't. Okay, who does he need to catch? Yeah, but who's in front of Corey LaJoy? Oh, Brad Keselowski's running around him anyway, so. I mean, it could be possible. Because, you know, Brad Keselowski's been very dog water. Brad is dog water now. Absolute dog water. I mean, I mean, I'm sad for RFK as we're battling for second. I'm sad for RFK for the reason that Chris Busher is outrunning Brad Keselowski every week, and Chris Busher runs basically borderline top ten every week. So, uh, and then Brad Keselowski. Chris Busher needs to go to SHR. No, Chris Busher to SHR. Reason I give him S SHR? Well, remember, oh, well, remember if er Eric retire. Well, hold on. Eric said he might not retire. He says he's been thinking about not retiring lately. So that ten could possibly not be, you know, open next season. But it also could be. I'm saying this now. You gotta get him at SHR. Yeah, that's what I'm just said. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, you also got to think who's replacement. Everybody's saying it's Ryan Priest because Ryan Priest is doing the SHR development program. Um, some are saying Riley Herps. Personally, I think Riley Herps is starting the kind of warmed warm up to me a little bit as not being overrated I thought he was I thought yeah he has no wins Caleb <laughs> he needs <laughs> Caleb says he needs more wins like he's won races <laughs> we're in the 41 is backed out so everybody gets top tens yay everyone gets top tens including me yay Oh, I'm losing my mind. 23 to go in stage one or two. Yay. I can't wait for next season for bigger fields. Um, just saying that now. <laughs> I hope the championship race on Thursday is not 11 cars. <laughs> Oh, so you're telling me it's going to be nine cars. Okay. We're hearing nine cars for the championship race. Oh. What? So you have to show up to the last race of the season? 50% of the play. 50? Two thirds. Okay, so basic, so basically sixty per sixty six percent of the playoffs. Oh my God, I can tell you this much. I don't. I haven't seen very many of the same names. So there's probably maybe about. There's probably maybe about. Twelve of the same drivers I've seen in like the last six races. So um. Everyone else has been very on and off, so to be honest, I can tell you there's only 12 people confirmed. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, but can we go back to Caleb saying that Riley Herbst needs more wins like Riley Herbst has won before or some something like that?
he came from Arca. He was Joe Gibbs's Arca driver before Ty Gibbs. Uh, he ran, if you remember, if you go back to like NASCAR E2, NASCAR E3, and the NASCAR Next program, he was like the 18 NOS truck in NASCAR E3. Um, he was like, the, he had NOS Energy as a sponsor, and then went to, uh, and then when uh, they went to Monster with Gi uh, for Gibbs, he got Monster. That's why he was able to run that full season for Gibbs. I think he ran two full seasons for Gibbs. He's ran two full seasons for two of the best programs in uh, Xfinity Series. Still has not won a race. Has gotten a minimum. This year is technically Riley Herbst's best Xfinity season yet. I mean, if you look at his stats, his first two seasons, he barely got... Oh, it's the 24s around. That is unfortunate. Unfortunate. Well, as the 24 is around, uh, this might be a picture of how the championship race might end on Thursday. Um, it folds. For show. Uh, let's see who's in. Um, Drifters for Life says, yo, I'm streaming the exact same game, by the way. I follow. Thank you, Drifters. Uh, oh, sh shoot. Hold on. I'm trying to see your profile because I want to I wanna follow you too. I want to drop a follow. See you as well. There you go. Oh, it looks like you're streaming like career mode or something on your on your channel. But yeah, right now we're uh, currently trying to commentate, but with 10, uh, with 10 guys in this race and everybody being spread out, we're trying to find some little entertainment. Um, so, right now, you look at the future of the Cup Series. RCR is going to have a ride open in 2024. We don't know what that's going to be. Probably either Sheldon Creed or Austin Hill and the first two guesses. Um, 23XI, we don't know in 2024 whether there will be three-car operation or they will be a two-car operation. Either Kurt Busch or Bubba Wallace is getting kicked out of that ride. Um... It also brings the question, I don't know other if you, like, if Almirola retires this year, there's a ride technically going to be open at SHR. Dominoes might fall, and uh, either Priest gets the ride, Busher can get the ride, and then technically there would be a spot open at RFK. I don't know. I think the, the only teams that are confirmed, also another thing we got to technically talk about, Kyle Busch is technically not re-signed yet to Joe Gibbs. He is still technically looking for a ride for next season. Even though I think 90% sure Gibbs is going to keep Kyle Busch. There's no way you don't keep Kyle Busch. But, um... <laughs> Kyle Busch to RCR. <laughs> Oh, we got a whoa. I heard Caleb say a whoa. Uh, Caleb. Caleb. We're hearing Caleb got touched by the seam. Um, back to the leader, though. And back to the Kyle Busch. If Kyle Busch does not get re-signed by Gibbs in 2023, what, what ride is he getting? It's the question. Because, like we said, there might not be very many open rides. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Kyle gets the five back. He goes to Hendrick. Oh, I'm not sure. Actually, and this is what I kind of think. This this is what I think is going to happen. And I think it's it's yeah, I think it's possible. But he might he might either re-sign with Gibbs next season or he opens up his own cup team with KBM with his own team. He'll get a cup car, everything. It'll be aligned with Gibbs. He'll still probably be Toyota. And Yeah, he has enough he 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 has enough money to definitely do anything. Yeah, but you forget a lot of teams can work out of another race shop like Gibbs or 
23 aside. Yeah. I mean, you can work out of another team's garage. Like, technically, if you go look, like, uh, Beard Oil, the, in the 62, that only runs, like, four races a year, literally works out of the RCR shop. But they're a different team. Yeah, so did Trackhouse. Yeah, Trackhouse worked out of RCR last year. Of the RCR shop. Ten Oh god, that that would be a debate, bro. I mean, what manufacturer do you go go with? What manufacturer do you go with? I mean, you look at it. Do you go with Toyota? Does JRM jump ship from Hendrick? And I mean, and then uh, or do you, <laughs> They'll go to SA. To be honest, if you look at the Xfinity, and this is the one thing with Ford and the Xfinity series, and this is why Ford is not winning much in the Xfinity series, they have the lowest car count in the Xfinity series. They only have like five, five or six cars that are Fords every week. No, they have Herps. Then they have the, uh, what team the 08 is. And then they have BJ McLeod Racing. And then there's Ryan Sieg. So there's at least, like, six cars right there. Last year it was just her. No, no. Technically, last year it was just Herbs and Sieg. Because Sieg was Ford last year. Yeah. Cinder. Yeah, so... Penske is completely gone with the Xfinity Series program. I don't know why they went. They kicked. They still have the Xfinity cars, but they haven't ran one. I mean, come on, let's run one. Let's run an Xfinity car. Let's see. Let's see, Drifters for Life said, I made you a mod on my channel. I wish Ryan Newman didn't have that big crash. I'm driving his orange car to support him. Um, yeah, I, yeah, Ryan Newman, I was happy. I was happy uh, when uh, Ryan Newman won the SRX race a couple weeks ago. That was a really good race. So... Is uh we're coming to the end of stage two here pretty soon, so uh let's go ahead and give our usual shout out. Shout out to our sponsor, Raise Energy. Raise Energy, the official energy drink of a little on the high side racing league. Go get yourself some Raise Energy today. Use our code A L O H S R L at checkout saves you fifteen percent off. Also go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. As well, that's where you'll see a couple of uh um, all my content, including this league. And then, also, join the Air Just Cause Discord. Very friendly Discord. It's got a lot of sports, got a lot of games. We got five to go here. Um, yeah. So, hold on. Because RCR, RCR needs help. Dude, that would actually make sense. No, that would make sense because remember, Dale Earnhardt did run for RCR. Dale Jr., JRM, RCR, gets teamed up with the team that his dad won. Partnership. RCJR. <laughs> or how about RCR Jr.? RC RCR Jr.? Well, te no, no, technically a lot of teams paired with uh, DEI. You had Everham DEI, then you had, then you, no, no, that, that was like when they dislodged. There was, um, there was Chip uh, Ganassi Earnhardt, Earnhardt Ganassi, um, and then they split. And then, uh, then at that same time, Everham Petty happened. Which is the only reason Richard Petty still has a race car team right now. Because if they didn't merge. Yeah, because if they didn't merge, it was over.
Kyle Bush. Uh, Kyle Bush? Bush Gibb, no. The only, the only team I see ever, anyone doing anything with is the smaller teams. You gotta look at maybe some like Spire, because the big teams I don't think will merge. Technically, Roush for the last couple of years have been a mid-pack team. How long are you streaming for? At least another, uh, another 30, 30 minutes. At least that's how usually these races run. At least another 30 minutes. Um... Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler Red gets to forty five. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would. Technically, I. Th yeah, is a uh, stage is over the nine. A trick is gonna win stage two. He's won. Uh, he is one stage one, and he's gonna win stage two. Let's see. If you want, you can come watch mine. Like I said, if you want to. Well. I'll see what I can do after uh, after the stream's over, but right now we're just busy trying to entertain the uh, the folks watching. Which, by the way, nine people nine people are currently watching me talk about NASCAR silly season while commenting a league race. So shout out to the nine legends that are in chat right now. I feel like. That that Hendrick lineup is going to stay for at least another five years. Yeah, I, I still think that lineup's still going to last for at least another five years. Elliot Larson. Bowman, Byron. Bowman. The thing is, Bowman is not the worst Hendrick car. He's the second best Hendrick car this season. Statistically, Alex Bowman has been the second best Hendrick car all season. Yeah. So that means he can get out of accidents, and he's also been consistent. He has the fifth highest average finish in NASCAR right now. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't know. He he was fast. Oh, we got crash. First big crash. Oh. Well, that is the first big crash of the race. Well, um. That was very interesting as the nines out front. As we'll talk about more about silly season once a long run kicks in. But the six and the 43 are going to battle here for second. Six is going to go to second. Here comes the two. Here for third. And the two and the 43 are going to go at it. Like we said, the championship four has been solidified. It is... The 6, 24, 43, and the 2. So, you know, they all four of them will be battling for the championship on Thursday at Las Vegas. We've got 50 laps remaining here in this race. Like I said, once we get a spread out long run, we'll go back to talking about... Uh, it's still not clinched, but it's looking like more li likely the 2. Caleb's trying to make it interesting, but we all know. Yeah, it is clinched. 
Caleb, you just murdered the guy that could have, you know, could have battled for that final spot. But no, no, Caleb doesn't want to make things interesting. Caleb, Caleb wants to run on the apron 100% of the time and think it's a raceable lane. As the six and the two are going to battle here for second. Nine is up front. So far, the nine has dominated this race. So far, it's been a great race for him. Was, uh, got a nice little spread out, or it was a little spread out. Leader is about maybe a couple car lengths ahead now. It looked like it was much bigger uh, last lap, but, uh, but yeah, this is definitely going to be a very interesting part of the race here. Final stage. Less than 50 to go. Definitely uh, definitely going to be something you want to keep an eye on right now is this top four that has kind of pulled away from the rest of the field. And then when pit stops happen, everything's going to be a little bit interesting as the two is going to go down the inside of the six here for second. And uh, see if he can clear the six here off of turn two. He will not. Six is going to get the run from the draft in the outside lane. Here we go through three and four. Two's going to get down back the inside. Six up the racetrack a little bit. So is the two. They're still side by side off of four. And the six is going to finally clear. Two's going to hop back in line. So. So, uh, I forget. There's technically 36 charters in NASCAR, right? There's 36. Technically, 40 cars can only enter a NASCAR race unless NASCAR decides to actually extend it back to 43, whenever that is. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know how you would get the charter. Because if you're looking at it, I think the only charter I feel like seeing getting taken away is maybe one of Spire's charters, because I think what they hold two? Oh, six in the two hit yeah rick Ware. rick Ware is another team where i feel like they should only have one full-time car um i think they only they have the the 51 <laughs> and the 15 yeah that's kind of not good yeah weren't they purchased by spire so i know Corey. Oh, hold on. I know what it is. Technically, Spire has two charters. One got one's currently still being leased out uh, by Trackhouse because they're still under the deal that Ganassi had prior. So, yeah. So they technically have one charter that's being, uh, you know, from from Trackhouse, and then they have uh, one that they got from Rick Ware. So that's because that's why Balicki and uh, LaJoy. It, I see Balicki. I'm still surprised how Josh Balicki has a ride at all, um, for one. But um, but I think uh, Balicki, uh, his charter, or whoever's going to be 77 is going to get kind of cut. And then somebody can definitely make a team out of that, or that can be the third charter for uh, 23XI. If they want to open a third car, I mean, it's like we can predict. It's either Hamlin's still going to stay at Gibbs and still do the uh, racing for Gibbs but own 23XI thing, or, good question. I'm going to look at my tablet so I can manage two things at once. Technically, Gibbs can pull the 54 like we talked about. Oh, Denny Hamlin can 100%. If, if there's a price for the 11, Denny Hamlin can 100% buy it. I mean... Yeah, hold on. Let me look up Denny Hamlin's contract.
Denny Hamlin's contract. So he signed an extension with Gibbs in 2021. Signed a multi-year agreement, so at least that's two years or more. Thirty-nine to go. Okay, thirty-nine to go. Nine still a leader. Um, yeah, it just says multi-year contract. Additional terms were not disclosed, so. The Dan Hamlin signs a contract extension. Contract extension. Multi year deer. Uh, see. Even if Denny, uh, Denny leaves Gibbs, I think FedEx still goes with him because FedEx and Hamlin signed a contract extension same day, it looks like. So it's like whatever Hamlin does, FedEx will still go with him. I mean. Which also, by the way, and I think this is also kind of funny. Um, it doesn't seem like FedEx is kind of scaling back on sponsorship this year. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at, because uh, I was, like, looking, I noticed FedEx has been ran less and less this year, a little bit less. I mean, Coca-Cola has been hopped on as a sponsor. Um, well, let me look at 2022 Cup, uh, Cup sponsors for Hamlin. Hamlin's had FedEx, Sports Clips, and Coca-Cola. This year. He's ran sports clips at one. Hold on. One. Two. Actually only one race. He's ran sports clips. He's ran sports clips. Yeah. He ran sports clips at Kansas. And then he ran. Coca-Cola this weekend. So. And then he, uh, th dude, that f FedEx. So, so, is there, there is a train of cars. Is hold on, Killer is battling for a position. Oh, you're telling me he's battling for a position right now? That's surprising. Okay, um. I'm going to go to my good old buddies at Racing Reference. Ooh, 24 gets a little loose into the 6. <laughs> wow. Um, it's 43. Looks like he's coming in. That is the 43. Yeah, that is the 43. 43 is coming in. Twenty-four is also pinning this time. Uh few driver standings okay right now as of points wise Chase Elliott is the regular season points leader over Ryan Blaney by uh, 200 oh no 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 not 200 oh, where's the points by at least 50 points so Chase Elliott's about roughly one race ahead of Ryan Blaney right now Ryan Blaney's about Ryan Blaney's about three points ahead of Ross Chastain for a second. Do Ross Ross Chastain Ross Chastain has a case for getting regular season title right now. He's only three points behind Blaney and Blaney's about fifty points behind Elliott. Um Larson in fourth, Kyle Bush fifth, Truex sixth, Gunnel seventh, Christopher Bell eighth, Alex Bowman ninth. William Byron, 10th. As uh, a lot of people are coming in for steps. 
Who wants to guess that has the best average finish currently in NASCAR? Any guess? Okay, you are on high. You are high right now. You have been on the three chi that Tyler X King sponsored by right now, Caleb. <laughs> well, well, close. Um, Ross Chastain has the second highest finish, uh, uh, average finish right now in NASCAR. Chase Elliott technically has the highest fin uh, average finish in NASCAR with a 10.8. Ross Chastain is 11.4 right now. Uh, there's going to be some unexpected people here. Um, Ryan Blaney in third. He's got about an 11.8 average finish. Kevin Harvick in fourth. Kevin Harvick has the fourth highest finish in NASCAR this year. Or average finish with a 13th average finish. Ryan Blaney has him by basically a full position. Kyle Busch is fifth. Larson's 6th, Truex is 7th, Alex Bowman's 8th, Eric Almarola has the ninth highest average finish this year, 10th is Christopher Bell, Eleven, Joey Logano has the 11th best average finish this year, Twelfth, the 12th best average finish this year is Austin Sindrick, 13th best uh, average finish this year is Michael McDowell, which Michael McDowell is having a year this year. Definitely that front row group is looking faster at a lot of racetracks with that 34 than it does with the 38. Sorry, Todd. Um, he's a rookie. He'll, he'll get better probably in the second year. That's if I hope front row keeps him the second year. But like I said, Mike Michael McDowell's having a year, though. I mean. Okay. Let's also look. Uh, what, what stat do we want to look at? See who has the most in that stat. Let's see. Laps led. Guess who has the most laps led this season? Yep, Chase Elliott has the most laps led. William Byron's got the second, but that's because the majority of them were was just dominating Martinsville. Um, Ross Chastain in third, Kyle Busch in fourth, Ryan Blaney's in fifth. I think Ryan Blaney's like top five or top ten almost every stat this year, except for wins. I mean, I'm wait. I'm hoping Blaney can win a race. Like, he won Texas, and that's the All-Star race. He, uh, Phoenix? Let me look. Ryan Blaney. He had a fast car at Phoenix. He won both. I think he won one of the stages. So one of the stages he lost because of a restart. But he had a fast car at Phoenix. See, Ryan Blaney this year. Ryan Blaney finished fourth at Phoenix. Ryan Blaney... Finished fourth at Phoenix and led 143 out of the 312 laps. So he almost led 50% of the laps at Phoenix. So. Let's see. Ryan Blaney's. Ryan Blaney's worst finish this year is, tw is 36. That was because he had uh, the crash at. Las Vegas. So, let's see. Uh, let's also look. His last uh, Ryan Blaney's last five races, he's gotten a top top ten four of them. I mean, Blaney Blaney's looking good. I just need him to win. I just want him to win. Just need. <laughs> yep. Yeah. See, Von Henry says who's leading. It's the nine right now. Trick is, Trick's got a big lead, and we really haven't had a caution this race, so we've just been talking about NASCAR stuff. Yeah, we. Who who wouldn't? Hmm. 
Dude, Bob Pockers is a legend. I think everybody would want his autograph. Yeah. I mean, it's Bob Pockers. Who wouldn't want to hang out with Bob Pockers? That is kind of my question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no R. Everyone says it wrong. Okay. Von Henny. Henny, like Hennessy? Like the Hennessy? Yeah. Henny, like the Hennessy. Okay. As, uh, the nines up front. Right now, it's been, uh, very, yeah, very, very, uh, very boring race. We've just been talking about NASCAR the whole time. So, big question. I've been actually thinking about wanting to do a video on this. I've been actually thinking about doing it as one of my major videos. But I was watching Slap Shoes. Uh, I was watching Slap Shoes this weekend. And uh, they were discussing NASCAR's major problem with uh, with its schedule. Um with uh, the shortage of short tracks on the schedule, and you look at where the short track areas are at, um, they are mainly in the south, or you know, around the Tennessee, the Tennessee area, the Virginia Richmond area. You know, they're very close together, and all the other short tracks everybody want are very close to those areas too, which means all the short tracks are very condensed in the south. There's no short tracks up north in the cities or in the west, except for the Clash Coliseum track. So, you know, <laughs> I like that Henny, Henny like Hennessy. <laughs> yeah, Henny like Hennessy. So, so, let's figure out how to fix NASCAR's short track racing problem. That sounds like a good good video to make. How how to fix NASCAR scheduling problem? Get more short tracks on the schedule, but also get mo more short tracks up towards the west or the north of the United States. Mm, the the thing is here here's the problem. I was watching Slap Shoes' video. I was watching Slap Shoes' video. He made a he made a video. He, he made a video on NASCAR short track problem, which um, NASCAR short track problem is, is that all the short tracks are down south and there's only none up north and there's technically one configured. As, uh, there's only like one short track in the west and that's like a co Coliseum converted into a short track. So this is how you fix NASCAR's problem. You actually... And I think I'm I'm thinking about this. Hear me out. You get more short tracks in the north and west. Also get a couple more super speedways up north and west. Because you also look at you look at the top two most popular ways of racing in NASCAR, which are short tracks and super speedways. All of them are condensed below the Mason Dixon line. So you, you gotta you, so you also gotta look. You need to get more tracks up north and west that are super speedway and short tracks. And you can cut a couple tracks from the schedule. One, I vote for Texas being cut off the schedule just because Texas sucks. Um, no, 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 no. Take Texas. Ta no, no, no. Don't configure Texas. Don't make it into a roval. Don't do anything. Just blow it up. Just blow up Texas completely. You know, that's the only way you'll fix Texas. You blow it up, okay? That is about it. There's no way you, you're fixing Texas, okay? Yes, would you convert it to a super... Could you convert it to a super speedway? Yes. But technically, there. this is my also problem. If you're going to convert it to a super speedway, what was the point of letting Texas World rot for years when you had an opportunity to buy Texas World and revalidate that into a super speedway? But you let Texas World rot, and Texas World is going to become a housing community. That's also great. So, that's my problem. If you make Texas a super speedway. 
as uh, the nines going down pit road. So those were the two words that I thought I would never hear: Caleb and Killer battling for the lead. That's those are two words I would never think that would be uttered ever. <laughs> Well, here we go. Final stops here from Homestead. I still can't believe Auto Club had that idea to make it a short track. I still can't believe that. And now that might not even happen with how good the, ra the race was this year, so... So, threes coming down pit road. Uh, how many to go do we have? Okay. Okay, 12 to go when the nine comes back to the line. Um, so, the race is coming down to an end. So... Hey. hey, the Guardians have been doing good too. Don't forget about the Guardians. The Orioles have found something, clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, let, let's let's look right now. Um, the Orioles are rise. The Guardians have been doing good. Guardians have been doing good as of late. I mean, let's see. Um, one other team. One other teams are doing good. Um, we think. So for you'll definitely you'll you'll definitely win then. Uh, you had a big gap to start with, right? I mean, yep. Well, yep. The nines basically won this unless Kasha comes out. So let's <laughs> go. Huh? Yeah, I just said he he'll win unless a caution comes out. MLB standings. Let's see. The Yankees are 14 games ahead of the Rays. Wow. Okay. The Yankees are 14 games ahead of them. That is insane. Let's see. The Rays. Let's see. Boston's 15 games. Let's see. Even though the Orioles are looking dangerous, quote unquote, they are still fifth and dead last in the AL East. So, AL Central, the Guardians have caught up to the Twins, folks. Guardians, remember about 28 games ago, the Guardians were 10 plus games behind the Twins. Now they're only four games behind the Twins. Well, let's see. White Sox are about five and a half games behind the Twins. Yeah. AL West, the trash can beaters are still leading the AL West. The, Mar the Mariners are doing pretty good this year, I guess. They're only 12 games behind the Astros. So... See, National League, the Mets, the Mets and the Braves are basically having a drag race for uh, the AL or the NL East. The Brewers and the Cardinals are having a drag race for the NL Central, and the NL West, uh, the Dodgers and the Padres are basically battling for that. Um, let's see. Who's got the worst record in baseball? It is the A's. Yay. The A's got the worst record in baseball. Okay, six to go. Six to go this time? Okay, well, six to go. 
that sounded so wrong. Um, let's see. Well, right now uh, we're coming to five to go this time. The Giants, the Giants are beating the Diamond Diamondbacks eight nothing. God. Five to go here from Homestead. And then we'll move on to the championship race on Thursday. I hope that is more entertaining than this race. So, I hope more people show up. So, who's last? Who's last? Oh, apparently the six is dead last on the track, so that puts him 10th. Right now, we got four to go left in this race. Sadly, even though the nine is going to get a win, a win here at Homestead, with the amount of wins that the nine has had this season, and he is not going to make the championship four, is actually going to be really disappointing. Yeah, um, the only reason he will not is because he missed, I think, two or three. Drink our bow for what? Okay, hold on. Oh, they, oh yeah, 17 to 6 are going after it. But here we go, coming to 3 to go this time here from Homestead. This time by. You know I can listen, right? <laughs> okay. 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 Dang, so who's behind Austin? Is we got three to go. Is it 95? Oh, oh it's two to go. We're coming to the white flag this time. Yeah, so we're coming. Finally, this race is about to be over. I feel like it's a miracle. I feel like a miracle is happening here on 34th Street. Here we go. White flag. One more lap remaining as he's got about maybe about a nine second lead and he doesn't need to worry about anything. Well, here we go down the back straightaway for the final time. And the nine through three and four is going to go ahead. Sadly, he will not make the final four with, like I said, the many wins that he has. That, that one week off that he had definitely hurt him a lot. But off of turn four, and the nine's going to win here at Homestead. Here we go, side by side. Foul between the 17 and the 24. Here we go through three and four. 24, 17, 24 tries to cross over. And that was anticlimactic because the 17 is going to get it. And the 24 is going to crash. Okay, who was the top three? Top three. Top three. Caleb got a top three. Wow. A place that's not Daytona, Talladega, New Hampshire, or Texas. Oh, wow. Caleb actually was fast. We just got to get Ding in here, then. Yeah, Ding's in here. Okay. Hopefully, the championship race goes more exciting, please. Please. <laughs> uh, I want more people to show up. I at least want 15 cars. Okay. 15 cars do not show up to Las Vegas. I will be depressed. Um, so here we go. Let's get an interview here where your third place finisher, Caleb, um, brings it home P3. Uh, Caleb, you got a copy there, buddy? 10 4 Audio is included. You get P3. How's the car for you today? Uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, the right side tires were pretty evenly weared all the way throughout a run. Um, I'll be honest, I only got up to second and third, uh, because, uh, 
right place, right time, and some untimely black flags from a couple guys and spins. Um, so being able to be there, and I had second going into the last lap, and just Ding got to the inside of me into one, and I just nothing I could do to answer it in three and four. So congrats to Ding on that pass. Uh, great battle out of the pits from me and him the whole time at that last stage. So. Yeah, definitely indeed. Um, tell us, how does it feel to uh, get a good top three here at Homestead? Because now you're going into the championship race, which um, championship race is going to be exciting, but you're not going to be competing for the championship, though. No, not going to be competing for a championship, but uh, helping helping the final four any way I can if I'm pushing them or something. Or, But, I mean, a win's a win, so if, if I'm battling there at the last couple laps doesn't mean I'm going to be given an inch there, so. Okay, and uh, anything you want to say or shout out before we go to second? Nah, just shout out uh, Andy for sweeping the night and uh, Ding for a fast car. I'm really surprised he didn't pass me sooner than the last lap, so. Congratulations to Andy on getting another win. Uh, of course, now I have to go make a card for it. Thanks, Andy. Um, and... Good luck to the championship for at uh, Vegas this Thursday. Okay, next, biggest question before we go on a second. Do you plan on messing up Colin at Las Vegas like you did two seasons ago? The The plan is to not, but you never know. So, the plan is not, but yeah. you never know. Okay, well, congratulations, and we wish you good luck at Las Vegas on Thursday. Thanks, Sarah. No problem is let's talk to the only guy that's moving on to the championship four that finished in the top three tonight. Ding brings it home, P2. Ding, you got a copy there, buddy? Yeah, yeah I do. Well, you uh, you end up P2 um, and lock yourself into the final four. Officially, you had to battle Tyler for that. Or just tell us, um, how was the car feeling for you all night long? Uh, it, it felt felt pretty good. Uh, obviously not as good as uh, the nine car. He was he was out there all night, but it it was it was a fast car. Uh, it, it was a really good battle out of the last pit cycle with that four car there. Uh, it, it, it was tough to get by. There's a lot of a lot of arrow in play. Every time I'll get inside, he just kind of sucked me back off the corner. He was really sticking a high side well. So, uh, shout out to the four car for putting on a good fun battle, and I uh, was finally able to kind of get around him on on that last lap and get that second place but uh other than that it was it was a pretty good race didn't screw up any pit stops this time yeah definitely indeed well you're going to be heading into the championship race with the least amount of wins out of anybody one win but your consistency through the regular season and the playoffs have put you in a situation to go win a championship on thursday Tell us what's going to be the preparation that you're going to put in here to uh, see if you can win your first title here in high side. Uh, I just got to try and try and put it all together and finish finish in front of three other guys. That's that's all I ever can really do. Vegas is a pretty good track for me, so just hoping I can uh, keep her straight, not screw up any pit stops on the final race. That would that would really suck. But uh, I'm excited. First full-time season with the league, so I'm, I feel pretty good about making the Final Four in the first full-time season. I only did about half of that silly season uh, prior to this one. Okay, well, anything you want to say and shout out here before we move on to your winner? Shout out to the nine car for winning, four car for a really good battle. Shout out to you for putting on the stream, and shout out to the league for just being here. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, well, congratulations on your P2. We wish you good luck at the championship race. Thank you. No problem, as we're going to go ahead and interview your winner here today, uh, <coughs> Trick, who's going to get it done here at Homestead in dominating fashion. Trick, you got a copy there, buddy? Yeah, I got you. Well, good uh, good win. Tell us how the car felt for you all night long. Uh, car was phenomenal. Um Made adjustments on it in the first stage to where I wanted it and didn't touch it the rest of the race. Yeah, uh, definitely indeed. Um, you dominated the race, but sadly you will not make the Final Four as being one of the favorites entering the playoffs to win this championship with the amount of wins that you have and you will not be making the playoffs. 
how disappointing is it for you, you know, not being able to contend for that championship? Uh, extremely with missing those last two races um, a couple of weeks ago, but good momentum for the next season, so we'll take it and uh, move on and hopefully try and get a win next weekend. Okay. Well, um, anything you want to say or shout out here before we uh, end the stream here tonight? Uh, shout out to everybody who raced. Shout out to you, Ayers, always, and everybody who tuned in. It was a really fun race and really enjoyed it. Okay, well, next question. We asked Caleb the same question. Is there any goal to mess up Colin here? Because usually somebody messes up Colin's race in this championship race. So do you have any plans on doing that? Uh, more so messing up everybody. I'm going to go out and drive like I usually do and hope to get a win. I mean, just because they're in the championship four don't mean nothing to me. Nothing's going to get in my way getting a win if I can't you know, stay up there. So, we'll see. I don't know. Only time will tell. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations on your win, and we wish you good luck at Las Vegas. Thank you. Is that's going to end it here? Thank God this race is over. Oh, wow. Uh, um, the Reds beat the Yankees we're tonight. We're going to go ahead and end the stream here tonight. I see. Thank you for everyone tuning in and watching. We'll see you guys for the championship race at Las Vegas on Thursday. I'm Eric Discause. No we'll see you guys next time.